Thank you all for joining. We'll go ahead and start the webinar. I'll introduce myself as Emily Smale. I am the executive director of the Group on Earth Observations Blue Planet Initiative. And I am based at the Satellite Oceanography Division in College Park, Maryland of uh, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the US. And today we have a special Networking Friday thematic special session on Sargassum. And for our speakers today, we have Cesar Toro, who is the head of the International Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO subcommission for the Caribbean and adjacent regions. And for his presentation, he will be talking about sargassum in the Caribbean and providing a policy perspective. Our next speaker will be Karima uh, Degia, who is going to be speaking to us about uh, SARGADAPT, which is a project that is being conducted by the University of West Indies on managing influxes of sargassum seaweed in the Eastern Caribbean. Next, we will have Sandra Ketalhek, Apologies if I pronounced your name wrong. And she will be talking to us today about a basin-wide perspective on looking at sargassum. And she is from the Atlantos program. And last but not least, we will have Leia Segi, who is a policy fellow to the NOAA Canals Fellowship Policy Program. And she is working with us on the Group on Earth Observations Blue Planet Initiative. And she will be giving an overview on the Sargassum Information Hub and how this initiative got started. After that, we will have uh, questions and answer. And we look forward to speaking with everybody and providing this information and then getting your feedback. So we'll go ahead now and get started. Um, I, I believe that one other thing that we wanted to point out before we get started is that uh, today we have registration for this webinar from 410 registrants from seven, six countries from all inhabited continents. So we really appreciate everyone taking the time to attend this webinar and we look forward to our presenters presentations as well as uh, the discussion. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn things over to Cesar, um, first providing a few housekeeping rules. One is just an FYI that this webinar is going to be recorded. And for the panelists, we would like everyone to keep yourself on mute and turn off your video when you're not speaking. And with that, we'll go ahead and start with Cesar's presentation. Good morning to everybody. Yes, my name is Cesar Toro. I am the head of the IOC of UNESCO, the Intermental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO Subcommission for the Caribbean and Adjacent Regions, IO Caribe. And uh, uh, we will discuss today from, uh, how we have been tackling the sargassum phenomenon in the Caribbean from the policy perspective. Uh, so please next, well, for, first of all, when we are, we are, we are, uh, we are going to, we are, uh, if we discuss uh, the sargassum issue in the water Caribbean region on the Western tropical Atlantic, first of all, we need to understand, uh, uh, I, I think that it's extremely important to understand what are the reality in this region. And you have a two major group of countries uh, in the Western Tropical Atlantic. Uh, there are the continental coastal countries and the Caribbean seeds. And they are two distinct regions uh, from not only from the ocean science capacity and economic development point of view, uh, as well as we have one of the uh, cultural and uh, one of the major cultural regions in, in the world, we have a, a, a combination of extremely uh, uh, great assets in the, in, in the region. So and both of those two regions are quite uh, dependent on uh, 
on the ocean and coastal resources. From one side, you, you will see that, uh, and this is extremely important to, uh, to stress that the Caribbean island countries, they are classified as middle, in, in middle income countries. Um, most of, uh, of them, they are a small island developing states. And this situation is indeed unique. And it, it, that pro provides and set up a different dimensions and challenges in terms of ocean science capacity and also as well as in resilience. As you can see, the, the islands uh, in, the, in this region, they are small, generally speaking, they are small in, uh, for its size, but they have a large maritime territory to uh, manage and uh, administrate. And as well, they have a, 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 a low size in population, as well as low resilience and high vulnerability to natural and human-made disaster. And the impact of the global cl climate change, and in this case, the sargasso, is uh, 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 affecting particularly the island states, considering that they have a high dependence on tourism. Next. So we have uh, a, a series of UN processes for sustainable development. They are setting, uh, setting up a series of frameworks where we uh, address member states, countries, governments, they are able to address the different uh, issues uh, 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 related to sustainable development. And you will have a, a different tools and instruments and frameworks like the, uh, biologi the uh, uh, Biological Diversity uh, uh, Convention. Uh, you have the law of the sea. You have the Samoa pathway, extremely important for island states. You have the uh, disaster risk reduction of Sendai framework. We have the climate change uh, and Paris Agreement. And you have the, the, uh, the 2030 agenda with the different sustainable development goals. Next. So what we can see is that we will have a series of uh, a frameworks. And if you can see in this, in this uh, slide on the vertical uh, axis, you will have the, uh, the different issues that we are uh, 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 dealing with. And on the hor uh, horizontal, you will have the, uh, the how these policies are, what uh, geographic scope they are uh, covering. So you will have the global policies, sectoral policies, and regional policies. Anna, uh, uh, please keep, the, uh, please keep uh, the, the previous one. Joseph, back, back. So you will have here a, a series of regional uh, policies and frameworks. You will have like the, a, one of the most important instruments that is available is precisely the Cartagena Convention and uh, uh, that is a uh, uh, work with the regional seas program. You have the CARICOM uh, block, you have the OECS, the uh, Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, you have the Association uh, uh, of Caribbean States, you have the uh, I, uh, uh, COPACO and uh, or WACAF in, in, in the region. So you have a series of frameworks available. And uh, a, if, if you look, next please, if you look at how the different countries are associated, you will have this, this graph that we are looking uh, at in the, at this moment. Uh, you can see the number of regional uh, frameworks, associations, uh, intergovernmental. Uh, uh, keep the previous one. Uh, intergovernmental uh, organizations, as well as regional uh, uh, organizations that are looking at the particular aspect. So there is a, no one or, or, or one single uh, organization that is uh, covering and uh, having the membership of the entire 
what the Caribbean region member states. So what is, uh, what is uh, clear is that we need to uh, cooperate and have a transdisciplinary uh, partnerships in order to tackle all those phenomena that are affecting or have an impact in, uh, in our region. So there is a, also, we can see that there is a good number of instruments already available. And uh, a, there is a, a series of uh, those instruments and tools and uh, fr policy frameworks are uh, there and they provide guidance and advice to countries. And uh, all of them, they have one, one, one thing in common is that uh, the, 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 that guidance and uh, uh, policy advice is based on science. So the, the interface science and policy making is quite strong in all of these organizations. Next. When we are talking about the sargassum, and uh, we know, and this is, a, this is a, a, a one, of, one of the characteristics of this uh, sar sargassum blooming is that in, in, during the last 10 years, we have been noting and we have been uh, facing a large quantities of sargasso that are reaching a, a, with thousands of tons of sargasso that overwhelm beaches throughout the Atlantic, or the tropical Atlantic, I would say. So that has a, a large impact on the coastal ecosystem and in, on the economies of the coastal communities. And uh, uh, I will quote Marshall and, and others that, that we, we, can, we notice that those uh, uh, influxes of sargassum in the region has been uh, becoming or have become a recurrent event, both in the Caribbean Sea and the wider Caribbean and in West Africa. And it seems to be a new normal due in part to the climate change and variability. So, is it a new normal? Next. So what, what happened is that we, uh, uh, when I say we, countries in the region, experts, uh, and everybody ha has, has been a, 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 a major reaction from the from the group that this trigger a lot of the discussions and in, in particular a, we have two of the major sectors who are ha, have been affecting in, in in the in the wider caribbean region like tourism and fisheries they a, they press a governments to obtain answers and a, so governments and member states, they, they were required to assess their capacity to understand the phenomenon, first of all, because we, 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 uh, 10 years ago, we, we, that was a, a surprise to everybody how that rapidly a, a spike and uh, the a, a sargassum influxes in the, in, in the, in the, in the region. So we, we, uh, we need to, uh, to work on the understanding of the phenomenon. So science is coming into, uh, uh, in, into the, the picture. Also, the uh, member states, they, they were quite uh, clear in the demand on how, uh, 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 whether we can provide a capacity to predict or forecast and uh, the, these uh, sargassum influxes. And as well, once we, we know that they are coming, how we are going to manage and how we are going to adapt. So uh, that these questions and these new phenomenon trigger a series of activities and actions that uh, they have been taking place during the last uh, 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 during the last ten years, the last decade at the national, subregional, and regional levels, and even as we can see here also by the uh, participation in this webinar, this is an issue that has a, a, a global interest 
from governments, experts, and uh, policymakers. So we have a series of activities taking place at those different levels on science and technology in order to address and understand the, the phenomenon, as well as how to produce those marine and coastal policy, and as well as how we are going to manage the, uh, the phenomenon and respond to those key questions that uh, countries are asking for us. To understand the phenomenon, to forecast, predict, how to manage, and how to adapt. Next. So I will use here, there is a, a, a the, I, I, I was just looking uh, uh, some weeks ago about how many activities and uh, uh, publications we have on sargassum from DNA up to how to manage and what kind of machinery sh shall be used in order to clean up beaches. So there is a, 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 on this from the science and technology, from coastal policy, from management guidelines, etc. There is a good number, extremely large number of activity. I only, I only put a few. I apologize if, if, uh, if I miss some. I certainly will miss a lot of those activities, but I just like, we, we like to, to point out to a few of them. And uh, 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 like the, uh, the Caribbean Alliance for Sustainable Tourism and the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, they put together a sargassum and resource guide for the Caribbean in 2015. We have as well a very interesting uh, work of the uh, CARICOM Regional Fisheries Mechanism or CRFM. It's a model protocol for the management of extreme accumulation of sargassum. And uh, a CIRMIS uh, at the University of West Indies, they put a very interesting sargassum management brief. You have, uh, a, and they, they, they had a hold, they held the first regional sargassum symposium in 2015 one of the first uh, symposium on the, on the issue. You have as well the Caribbean Sea Commission. You have the Ayo Caribbean Bio City UNESCO and the work we have been doing with uh, all our uh, partners. You have the uh, Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute who has been uh, leading as well and pushing jointly with CERMIS and other uh, major uh, expert groups uh, the science aspect of, uh, uh, of the sargassum. Next. We had as well some uh, a, a IOCARIBE jointly with a, a within the framework of IOCARIBE Goose, Geo Planet, UNEP, CARCU, and other partners. It's a long list of partners we have been developing a, an integrated sargassum information and forecasting system for the wide Caribbean that was started in 2018. And we, we will have, uh, uh, by then, uh, 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 the last presentation, we'll, we will have one of the components of this uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, advanced, that is the Sargassum Hub. And you have a series of other, uh, you, you have the UNEP and the Cartagena Convention, who has been working a lot on uh, the policy making and uh, developing the first a draft for a white paper. And we have as well a first international conference on Sargasso that was uh, uh, held in Guadalupe and organized by the French government in October of last year. So uh, uh, because of the COVID-19, et cetera, they, uh, we were forced, happily forced to organize a series of large webinars and one of the advantage that we, we found is precisely what is happening today is the, the, the possibility of having this and sharing this information with all of you at a very large number who can participate from anywhere in the planet. And this is a, one of the reasons why IOC with UNESCO partnered with UNEP, the Global Partnership for Nutrient Management, the IOC score Global Hub Program and the Joint Group of Experts on Scientific Aspect of Marine Envir Environmental Protection, GESAM, TAS team. To org and they are, uh, uh, we are organizing a series of webinars on sargassum in the Caribbean and West Africa that started this year. So 
as you can see, there is a, a good number of activities. I, I certainly miss a, a lot of them. But what is the point is that there is a large number of groups, expert groups, and uh, a, a institutions, organizations, and all of us, all of you included, are working, trying to understand the different elements from science, how to develop the necessary policy, provide guidelines, and how to manage this phenomenon. And a, a, that number is increasing every day. Of course, what we can say is there is a large a difference between what we, uh, what we knew 10 years ago and where we are today. Next. So I also look at, the, uh, at how, how are we doing with the uh, developing management plans and guidelines uh, in the region in order to address those sargasso influxes. So uh, I use, again, I mentioned only a few uh, of the, uh, uh, this is a, a, only a few examples of what is going on. And at uh, the uh, national plans, we have a series of uh, countries who has been developing drafts or a, 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 a well um, a described national plans for managing the sargassum influxes. That those plans contains a, how to uh, guidelines on how to, to deal with the sargassum and a explanation uh, uh, on the nature of sargassum. Uh, uh, there are some of them, they have a quite a thorough description on how to, uh, uh, what kind of machinery and what, how we can clean up the beaches, etc. And as well as how we can uh, uh, manage uh, the ecosystem that are integrated in, in, in the beaches on a coastal area, etc. So you, you can see uh, the, the, those countries' plans uh, differ a, a, a lot from uh, one to another. As well, regional organizations, they have been also, uh, as we uh, noticed in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, panel uh, uh, slide, that there are already a, a advances at the sub-regional and regional level. I would just notice the work, of, as I mentioned, of the uh, CRFM, the Organization of uh, Eastern Caribbean States, the Association of Caribbean States, as well as all the work that the uh, UN Environment, courtesy you, uh, the Secretary of the Cartagena Convention and Regional Program, C, C program, is doing. So again, this is uh, some examples of what's going on from the point of view of developing those management plans and guidelines. Next. So what I will uh, I, I will uh, read in and, and I and will use some of the recommendations and conclusions of my fellows. Some of them they are here in the panel and also are uh, among our uh, participants. Uh, I, I I will uh, quote two of of the uh, of, of those conclusions from my colleagues that. Uh, somehow summarize the, uh, the situation from the policy perspective, management perspective, and science. First, I, I will read through uh, the quote is, the sustainable management of sargasso influxes will require both local action and regional coordination and collaboration beyond areas under national jurisdiction. A better understanding of the geographic origin causes, spatial and temporal patterns, management options, as well as the economic potential of sargassum is necessary if adapted strategies, if adapted strategies are to be implemented. What we could, uh, we could see uh, again is that uh, considering that we have a large number, uh, the critical mass pushing to understand the, and pushing the science of the sargassum, as well as pushing 
the management, uh, uh, the process and the possibilities of how we are going to manage and the guidelines to and best practices, etc. That uh, there is a lot of uh, efforts. However, we need to have a regional coordination and collaboration. Secondly, what we can see that is that there is a critical need for, for comprehensive management planning for increased resilience to and benefit from sargasso influxes. Sargasso management planning should be addressed in the context of a phenomenon that is both currently a threat and opportunity. Here again, we have a, a we need to, uh, in order to develop those management plans, it says, uh, uh, the objective is precisely to increase the resilience of, of countries in order to address this, these influxes and this phenomenon. And also, uh, we need to understand that the sargassum is not simply a threat. We have the feeling, the perception that this is, will be a hazard that could become a disaster, yes? So we, in order to uh, understand and really have a comprehensive management planning, it's necessary to address this phenomenon in the context of a natural hazard that is not only a threat, but also it could be an opportunity. And also, I and I I can see uh, as a summary that there is a a need for a strong interregional cooperation between the wider Caribbean region of Western Tropical Atlantic and West African countries is needed. That is it's really important to understand that this phenomenon is uh, affecting the entire. Uh, a tropical Atlantic and uh, the efforts that we are doing uh, individually in our regions need to be coordinated not only between the two extremes of the Western trop the, of the tropical Atlantic, but at the entire uh, Atlantic. And we need to join forces in order to address this phenomenon and move forward, uh, sharing the best practices and best science, not only uh, uh, among the, the countries in the, uh, in the Atlantic, but as well as to share this uh, experience and best practices and management plans with our other fellows from the other uh, part of the ocean in this planet. And as well, I would like to point out to a great opportunity that we have in order to advance a, in the sargasso uh, understanding, policy making, and uh, addressing the, a, 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 the management of the sargasso phenomenon. Uh, the opportunity we have within the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, 2021-2030. Uh, there is a great opportunity for us to, to join forces and establish a, a great partnerships in order to address sargassum within the decade and be able one decade after this uh, phenomenon started, to provide in the in this new decade the uh, answers that member states and people in general are asking from us about the a sargassum phenomenon. So I would like to stress the importance of these partnerships. No country, no group, no institution alone by themselves can address uh, a move forward in this issue unless we join forces and share the necessary experiences and plans with all others so we can move forward 
uh, and respond with the necessary policy framework to uh, people that are re uh, requesting from us uh, this and is extremely uh, needed and important so we can move forward with this. With us, with that, next, please. I would like to thank all of you, and we are uh, we are ready to uh, address your question that will be uh, uh, we will happily uh, respond in the Q and A session. Thank you, thank you, Emily. Back to you. Great, thank you, Cesar. And just a reminder for our participants that questions will be addressed during the Q&A session after the presentations and questions will be taken via the Q&A chat box. So please go ahead and add any questions you have to the chat box. And we will move on now to our next presenter who is Karima, who will be talking to us about the Sargadapt project. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Karima. Thank you, Emily, and good morning, everybody. I am just going to share my screen. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure this morning to share with you an overview of the Sargadap project being executed by the Center for Resource Management and Environmental Studies, or CERMES, in Barbados. There we go, sorry about that. So to begin, I just would like to tell you a little bit about CERMES. Um, CERMES is a department within the Faculty of Science and Technology of the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus in Barbados. Established in 1986, CERMES was created in response to the Caribbean's need for a multidisciplinary program that incorporated environmental issues into sustainable development. Thus, CERMES mission to make a significant contribution to sustainable development in the Caribbean region. And here I just wanted to step back out a bit and look at where CERMES works for a bit of context. And, and Cesar did the heavy lifting here for me, so thank you. Um, but as he told us, the Caribbean is a, a diverse and complex region and it contains a co concentration of small island developing states. The small islands that are literally on the front line receiving sargassum influxes from the um, equatorial Atlantic are most of them SIDS. The others are, are overseas territories. Um, the well-known sustainable development challenges of SIDS that Cesar outlined for us, these persist even as sargassum influxes are added to the mix. And our islands, our small island realities those shape how sargassum affects our lives and they shape our options for adaptation. So I think that context is, is key to understanding the approach that um, we'll be taking going forward. Here, I just wanna tell you a little bit about what CERMES has been doing with sargassum. Being here on the front line, there's been no time to waste and CERMES has stepped up to the plate. CERMES has been at the forefront um, of communicating the latest sargassum science and innovation since the very first influx in 2011. Um, representatives of CERMES have given presentations at numerous regional and international events. And going a step further, CERMES went on to host two sargassum symposia at the University Cave Hill campus, first in 2015 and again in 2018. And at that time, in order to provide in an information resource for stakeholders, CERME set up a dedicated page on their website to serve as an information repository on sargassum. CERMES has key areas of research and action for CERMES have included monitoring, networking, documenting impacts, especially in the fisheries sector and assisting with response and management plans, as well as forecasting and early warning. And that's one area where we are particularly proud of some of our outputs. Under the CC for Fish Sargassum subproject, 
CERMES worked on research with various collaborators into the factors underlying sargassum influxes and the development of a numerical model to predict these influxes. CERMES is now at the point of producing every two months a sargassum outlook bulletin for the Eastern Caribbean. If we zoom in a bit, we can see that each bulletin provides three month predictions on the levels of sargassum that may be expected to impact the islands of the Eastern Caribbean. In terms of monitoring, CERMES has, since 2018, been testing and comparing the use of off-the-shelf recreational drones equipped with RGB camera payload together with drone flight planning mobile application and cloud-based photogrammetry mapping software as a tool for rapidly monitoring and detecting sargassum remotely. Remote sensing and standard geospatial techniques were then leveraged to map, classify, and quantify the abundance of stranded sargassum. Conventional transects and quadrat surveys were simultaneously conducted to validate the results of the, of the drone mapping and methodology and geospatial analysis. Finding, findings of this work support the potential of this approach to be brought into mainstream use for monitoring sargassum through the development of a, a standard protocol combined with strategic provision of resources and training in the application. CERMES also spent quite a bit of time working with partners and stakeholders and using lessons learned from across the region to produce good practice guidelines. And here I thank Cesar for the big up. Um, he did mention the first of these guidelines in 2016, a management brief on how to remove sargassum from beaches. Subsequently, CERMES also collaborated with partners GCFI and SPARAC under the CC4 Fish project to produce a what to do and or what not to do infographic poster. And most recently, also under CC for Fish, CERMES produced a best practices guide in coping with sargassum for fishers, produced in collaboration with fishers. Last up on the undercard, as it were, um, just a preview here of the soon to be published sargassum user guide. This is a substantive review and collation of information on current and potential uses of sargassum in the Caribbean, including analysis of challenges and research gaps. It brings together published work, dozens of interviews with innovators, and site visits to small and medium scale sargassum enterprises across the region, including Mexico, the Dominican Republic, and Guadeloupe, where such work is quite advanced. And this brings us to the main event. So having spoken to you a little bit about what CERMES has been doing in Sargassum since 2011, since the first influxes, we are now thrilled to have recently launched our Sargadap project in which we will be building on and significantly expanding the work to date. Sargadap is our nickname for a project with a lengthier title that you see on your screen. Adapting to a new reality, managing responses to influxes of Sargassum seaweed in the Eastern Caribbean as, an ecos as ecosystem hazards and opportunities. The overarching goal of Sargadap is to reduce the impacts of and improve adaptation to sargassum influxes in the Eastern Caribbean with emphasis on converting a climate linked ecosystem hazard into an asset that supports opportunities for socioeconomic development. So what we want to emphasize here is that this is about taking something that is a hazard that has negative impacts and converting it to an asset, something with benefits. And in so doing, we improve our adaptation to climate change. To implement SARGDAPT, CERMES has received grant funding in the amount of just approximately 980,000 US dollars from the ecosystem-based adaptation facility of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund with financing from the International Climate Initiative of the German Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety through KFW. Sargadapt is one of 11 projects approved under the EBA facility first call for proposals. For more information on the CBF and the EBA facility and the other projects that the first call for proposals funded, please do visit their website. 
I just wanted to touch a little bit on, on the type of project here. So Adapt has been designed and funded as an ecosystem-based adaptation or EBA. As we know, climate change is a global issue that disproportionately affects our Caribbean small island developing states. We are among the least contributors to the causes, causes of climate change, but we are among those most impacted by its adverse effects. As such, it's largely beyond our control to lessen the impacts of climate change. We must adapt to survive. Amongst our adaptation strategies is ecosystem-based adaptation or EBA, a type of adaptation strategy. This relies on using biodiversity and ecosystem services to help people adapt to the adverse effects of climate change. Ecosystem services or the benefits we obtain from climate change can help us adapt, the benefits we obtain from ecosystems, I'm sorry, can help us adapt to climate change. The EBA case of Sargadapt is an interesting one. Floating Sargasm is itself an ecosystem that provides services. And it is much valued in the Sargasso Sea of the Northern Atlantic. But it doesn't always feel that way to us here on the receiving end of massive influxes on our shores. When it is stranded on our shorelines in large quantities, it has negative impacts on other ecosystems, coral reefs, mangroves, seagrass beds, and our sandy beaches, of course. By better managing the influxes, we mitigate the impacts on our coastal ecosystems and thereby protect those ecosystem services. By seeking to convert the hazard to an asset, we look at how we can obtain and leverage ecosystem services from the sargassum itself. Sargadap's EBA approach will be people-centered and participatory. <laughs> It will institutionalize practical adaptation benefits. Activities will include collaborative research, combining scientific information, local knowledge, and lessons learned to produce good practice guidelines, training and standardized monitoring protocols and innovative technology, co-developing practical EBA solutions, and collaborative planning centered on EBA. As we saw earlier, the islands of the Eastern Caribbean are quite literally on the front line, receiving influxes of sargassum coming in from the equatorial Atlantic. Sargadap focuses on this frontline region with five participating countries in the Eastern Caribbean, namely Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and Barbados, where Sarmiz is based. Sargadap will be implemented in three components over three years, 2020 to 2022. And it is organized in three components. Component one focuses on the mobilization of knowledge. Component two focuses on the development of capacity. And component three on the institutionalization of adaptation. And in the upcoming slides, we're just going to run through what each of those consists of briefly. Component one, mobilizing knowledge. So here we are mobilizing knowledge to bring it to stakeholders. To do this, we need to do two things. We need to understand our stakeholders well, and we need to collate and curate knowledge to meet their needs. So under component one, we'll be conducting a stakeholder analysis to identify stakeholders and understand their interests. And we'll be developing an engagement and communication strategy. In parallel with this, we intend to compile relevant information adding to the body of knowledge. So here we are building on previous work. We are seeking to, to fill some of the gaps in information that have been identified in, in, in Sermi's previous work and the, the work of others. And so this involves a number of research activities. First, we'll be conducting a review of literature, secondary data, and local knowledge to synthesize essential information for improving adaptation to sargassum. We envision a dynamic annotated bibliography with periodic summary or synthesis doc documents by topic. We will build on CERMI's previous work using drone technologies in quantifying sargassum, following the logical next step to develop a protocol that is accessible and usable by parties within participating countries to conduct their own monitoring using off-the-shelf recreational drones. New research will include studying the biodiversity associated with sargassum 
so that we can advise on how removal and management measures can be implemented to minimize or avoid impacts on that biodiversity. So that is looking at sargassum, the ecosystem. In parallel, we will be investigating the impacts of sargassum on other coastal ecosystems. And so that is where sargassum, the ecosystem versus sargassum or rather sargassum influxes, the hazard. Alongside this biophysical research, we will also be undertaking economic assessments of the impact of sargassum to inform decision and policy making. So we have these two parallel streams, understand our stakeholders, collate and curate the information that they need. And after working on these things, our next task is to synthesize and curate knowledge products that are targeted at key stakeholders in the Eastern Caribbean. We intend to build on existing good practice guidelines to produce a range of tools and guidance materials that effectively convey information to stakeholders that need it. Component one is intended to culminate in the development of a knowledge platform for dissemination of information. We envision the knowledge platform as being a dynamic and multi-dimensional platform providing information for the general public, specific sectors, communities, policy and decision makers in our constituency, the Eastern Caribbean, as well as other researchers and academics. Its development will be participatory and collaborative, drawing on inputs from stakeholders on how they would like, the, how they would like to interface and receive information. It is intended to complement and function alongside similar efforts by others. Component two focuses on the development of capacity. So component two takes the next step beyond mobilizing knowledge into to knowledge products and a knowledge platform. It takes the next step to providing training and capacity building directly to stakeholders. We will establish, we will be establishing a network of stakeholders to improve communication and information exchange. We will be developing and delivering training and capacity development packages. These will include, although not limited to, delivering training on the drone monitoring protocol. So under component one, the protocol is developed, building on previous work, and under component two, stakeholders in the participating countries are actually provided with direct practical training so that parties within each country can undertake their own monitoring. As well, we will establish a regional action learning group and we'll be providing technical and organizational assistance to organizations and communities seeking to adapt to sargassum and benefit from its use as an asset. Component three, adaptation institutionalized. I apologize. Under this component, we will also be building on previous work, continuing the production of the Eastern Caribbean Subregional Outlook Bulletin that we spoke about earlier. We plan to design and implement community-based demonstration projects, drawing on the uses guide and the work of component one, mobilizing knowledge and supported by capacity built under component two. CERMES will convene a third Sargassum Symposium bringing together partners and stakeholders and showcasing knowledge mobilized, capacity built and the outputs of demonstration projects. Finally, we will be developing community and sectoral adaptation plans that fit well within and link well to broader national and regional adaptation plans in order to move towards a more cohesive framework for institutionalizing adaptation. To wrap up, I just want to let you know where and how you can access more information on CERMES and CERCADAPT. As part of launching the project, we have prepared some simple communications materials, such as this flyer, which is available on the project webpage that links more broadly to CERMES' other work on Sargassum. As work proceeds, we expect to upgrade the website and update it periodically to reflect progress. It has been my pleasure this morning to share this, or today, um, to share this presentation with you. We look forward to engaging with you as work progresses. Have a great weekend, everyone. With that, I will hand back over to Emily, our moderator.
Uh, great, thank you so much for that very interesting presentation, Karima. We will move on now to our next presentation from Sandra, and she is going to be talking to us about a basin scale perspective on sargassum. Yeah, so welcome from my side to everybody. I'm Sandra Kegelhake, working at the German Marine Research Consortium and JPI Oceans and supporting the implementation of the Atlantos program together with our steering committee and all the partners who are engaged in Atlantos so far. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to present you the basin scale perspective on how to observe, understand, predict and managing the sargassum together. And um, therefore, I will um, shortly introduce you to Atlantis, the program, um, which builds on or follow up on the European Union Horizon 2020 funded project Atlantis and its two approaches before I'm then going um, into more detail on the joint use case on mitigating impacts of sargassum on coastal communities in the tropical Atlantic. So um, Atlantos offers a service for the community to act as a forum um, for exchange and alignment of interest and thematic scopes to support the implementation of an all Atlantic ocean observing system as an international program, which leads to a comprehensive um, yeah, system that benefits all of us living, working and relying on the ocean. And therefore the ambition of Atlantos is to look at the whole basin, so support the, uh, the all Atlantic perspectives, which means um, that we are connecting the sub basin regional and national observing activities in the Atlantic Ocean from the north to the south and um, connecting as well to the marginal seas like North Sea or Mediterranean. Um, yeah, and in addition, we are supporting the regional implementation which uh, means the implementation of the Galway MPLM statements and other international activities like GeoBlue Planet or um, Goose and its regional alliances. And uh, with this, through the value chain approach, we, uh, uh, which orients towards the framework for ocean observation, uh, we seek to fully meet the user needs and an active reviewable process um, to achieve the fit for purpose system. So now I would like to showcase you shortly how Atlantis um, will generate value. It's um, a three pillar approach. So we are doing this through the community building, which means we are bringing together the observations communities in the Atlantic region. As you might know, we have people observing the ocean, uh, using the data to produce data products or inform, um, yeah, the, the group who is building or enhancing um, information products within the ocean. Our second pillar is about um, services for society, which means that we would like to enhance and develop services for societies and yeah, doing this together with the, the experts in specific areas. And the third pillar is on communication, um, which means that we would like to improve the communication within our communities and with the users of ocean information products. So here you just see uh, some more information about our governance structure. If you would like to read a little bit more about the Atlantis project you, a program, you can take a look at the high level strategy, which was as well published last year as an Ocean Ops 19 community white paper and Frontiers in Marine Science, or just take a look at the website and um, you see as well the Atlantis steering committee members, which are like a transatlantic group with different expertises and yeah from from different areas um yeah and and my um, position in this is to su support the, the implementation of the program later like i already mentioned at the beginning so 
now I would like to introduce you a little bit more to the content related activities and to the um, yeah to approaches we are yeah following up or um, implementing within Atlantos. The first one is the basin scale implementation, which means that we would like to improve international collaborations in the design implementation and benefit sharing of ocean observing. Um, we promote engagement and innovation in all aspects of ocean observing, facilitate free and open access to ocean data and information, which hopefully will lead um, in the near future and uh, probably through the um, yeah, UN Ocean Decade to a digital twin ocean and all the other activities which are promoting this um, digital twin ocean. Um, yeah, we enable and disseminate methods of achieving quality and authority um, of ocean information. And we would, or we strengthen the global ocean observing system and contribute to Geo Blue Planet initiative. And as I already mentioned, we contribute to the Galway and Balam statements on Atlantic Ocean Cooperation. And the second approach is the one on the use cases, um, which will lead us then to the Sargassum um, issue in a few minutes or seconds. <laughs> um, so with the use cases, we would like to um, yeah, build upon existing data and observing infrastructures and activities, help building the community um, and capacity exchange, work towards needed services, which are not presently available or enhance the services by working together, create a prototype component of the final system and contribute to the implementation of international activities like the UN Ocean Decade, um, yeah, activities at the European, US level, can, yeah, so wherever it is needed. And so we openly encourage and invite others um, to self-organize yeah, yourself within the frame of Atlantos. The presently active use cases spanning or are around um, different topics, as you see here. So we have one use case focusing on the AMOC observations, providing basin scale climate services, um, one about carbon uptake, one about um, ecosystem-based fisheries management in Atlantic upwelling regions. One is focusing on marine animal movement in a changing environment. And now I would like to give you some more insights on our joint use case on mitigating impacts of sargassum on coastal communities in the tropical Atlantic. And as you heard um, from Sisa and Karima, this issue is right now a basin wide one. So therefore it really yeah, fell within the frame of Atlantos so that we decided to get in contact with other actors that we were aware which are yeah, the ones who are working within this field. So therefore we connected or we reached out to GeoBlue Planet the Air Center, Ambon, NOAA, um, EU Caribe, and FIU. And um, yeah, within our first call, we uh, identified that there are so many great activities going on as you see on this slide. So please, um, yeah, excuse if you are not listed. It's just to showcase that we identified this, that there are many uh, um, good activities, but that there's a lack of coordination. And we identified as well that um, there, there's as well a lack of access to free, open and easily understandable monitoring and forecasting products for the society, that we still have some lacks about the knowledge um, on the biological and ecological impacts of the increased sargassum and its reproduction, and on how sargassum biomass, for example, can be used. And so we, we know that there are a lot of projects and initiatives working on, on these issues and filling the gaps. And so we would just like to facilitate um, the, yeah, your, your cooperation that you can exchange your views, align your interests and um, the needs we identified or information products we identified to move forward in this um, 
are an information hub that uh, will enhance the coordination of the activities and sharing the knowledge of the activities already operating and allows the different actors to align their activities. Um, a second need we identified was that um, integrated satellite and in situ monitoring efforts yeah, need, mm, need to take place through building on the existing products or activities and develop a region-wide monitoring and forecasting system, which spans from Africa to the Caribbean. Um, thirdly, we uh, identified or see that field experiments are needed whom, uh, who will uh, improve the validation and reduction of uncert uh, uncertainties um, of, an, yeah, of, of the products, which are, for example, focusing on coastal areas. Um, the fourth need we identified is that data products um, linking forecasting services are needed to help mitigate and manage the activities. And this could lead, for example, to a basin-wide forecasting system, which will tackle the possible observation gaps and identify where, for example, long-term measurements need to take place to improve the information products. And um, there's as well a lot of space and in information products on the biological and ecological impacts of increased sargassum. So for example, um, products about the, the bloom cycle, the sargassum belt ecosystem, and the investigation of possibilities to decrease or eliminate um, yeah, sargassum at the beaches. This is just to, yeah, or here we would like to, to showcase what's the value added through the Atlantis program. So through the project, which um, where we develop, for example, the value chain you saw on one slide, um, we, uh, we have a lot of experiences in yeah, bringing the different communities together to collaborate and to, to plan the research observing and monitoring strategies. Um, we uh, would like to help in ensuring and expanding the link between ocean atmospheric and environmental observations um, and the different communities in this and um, yeah, building on existing efforts to the space and white phenomenon. Um, we have as well established contacts to um, international data platforms like GEOS to promoting the FAIR principles for the Sargassum data. And we can demonstrate the value of the information derived from the ocean observations through, for example, contributing to international activities like the UN Ocean Decade. This, uh, these are our current activities. So as you see here, we are, for example, developing at the moment a working plan, identifying as well resources that are needed, resources meaning not only budget, but as well um, the observation infrastructures which would be needed to tackle the problem. Then um, at NOAA, there's a Coast Watch. Uh, Coast Watch is developing an in situ database and citizen science data collection app. And uh, we are identifying. Uh, yeah, the stakeholders in this topic. And um, Lee will, uh, in a few minutes, present you the Sargassum Information Hub, which was mentioned before and was one, of, yeah, or was our first project or activity in this joint use case. And it will be launched today. So, with this, um, yeah, I would like to thank our partners. So EO Caribe, um, FIU, uh, GeoBlue Planet, the Air Center, Ambon, um, and the ones who are already involved in this use case uh, for their work. And we are looking forward to the collaboration and are looking as well forward to get in contact with, yeah, hopefully most of you to, uh, yeah, tackle this issue together and find a way how we can observe, understand, predict, and manage the Sargassum issue together at the basin scale level. So please contact us. With that, I would like to close and hand over to Emily. Thank you so much, Sandra. 
So now we'll move on to our last presentation of this session, which will be Leia Segi, who is going to be giving an overview of the Sargassum Information Hub. Leia? All right, thanks, Emily. All right, can you see my presentation? Yes. All right, thank you. And I wanna thank our previous presenters for sharing their perspectives on the issue of sargassum from policy to science, from the Caribbean to the basin scale. I am very excited to present the launch of the Sargassum Information Hub today. But before I do, I want to take you through the history that led up to the hub. First, I want to introduce the GeoBlue Planet Initiative, which is one of the hub contributors. GeoBlue Planet is the coastal and ocean arm of the group on Earth observations which is an intergovernmental organization working to improve the availability, access, and use of Earth observations for the benefit of society. GeoBlue Planet specializes in linking ocean and coastal information with society, bridging the gap between data providers and decision makers. Our work is both cross-cutting and thematic and you could see a list of our thematic areas on this globe here. And our work on Sargassum falls under our thematic area of disaster warning and mitigation. As we've seen in the previous presentations, Sargassum has been an issue for almost a decade and our presenters have done an excellent job um, talking about its challenges. Geo Blue Planet began collaborating with Ayo Caribe on Sargassum shortly following the 14th session, um, the 14th Ayo Caribe session in 2017, where member states formally recognized the impacts of Sargassum. Around this time, stakeholders were also attending several related workshops. We see a couple examples here uh, one on the sustainable development goals in the Caribbean and another on blue economy and risk management. And so these workshops were covering portions of Sargassum. Later the same year in 2018, Ayo Caribe, Geo Blue Planet and other partners organized a workshop which was hosted by the Mexican government and supported by the government of Flanders and NOAA. And this workshop was to support um, a sargassum and oil spills monitoring project for the Caribbean and adjacent regions. Since our original focus was on the Caribbean, Atlantos approached GeoBlue Planet and Ayo Caribe about expanding the project scope to include the full tropical Atlantic due to the basin scale nature of this issue and its known impacts on Africa. And you can see the image in the back, it's, you could see the extent of just the floating sargassum throughout the entire Atlantic. So this isn't an isolated case, and so it requires a larger scale approach. We are currently moving forward in collaboration with Ayo Caribe, Atlantos, Air Center, and other partners to support an integrated approach to monitor and forecast concentrations of sargassum in the tropical Atlantic. We are doing this based on publicly available data from in situ and satellite measurements from countries with open data sharing policies. Our project objectives include creating a shared and open database for in situ validated satellite products and collect additional data submissions through a Sargassum observation survey. We want to link data products with forecasting services to improve and expand on local sargassum inundation reports and develop a basin-wide scale forecasting system 
so that we could tackle possible observing gaps and indicate where long-term measurements would help improve information products. Lastly, we want to produce an integrated and multilingual guide on best practices for managing sargassum. In 2019, member states of Iocaribe requested that Iocaribe Goose, GeoBlue Planet, and other partners continue their efforts to one, develop an operational region-wide information and forecasting system for sargassum and oil spills, and two, develop a guide on best management strategies for sargassum events in the coastal environment. Because sargassum inundation events have such an impact on coastal communities, there have been lots of monitoring efforts that have been established. We've seen examples of bulletins and reports. Here we have the University of South Florida monthly sargassum bulletins, the NOAA USF experimental weekly inundation report, a surveillance bulletin for Guadalupe, and we saw earlier the CIRMES subregional outlook bulletin. There are also viewers and forecasting systems, such as the NOAA Coast Watch Ocean Viewer, Sargassum Early Advisory System, Sargassum Watch System, and SAM Tool. Additionally, there have been various workshops for countries to come together to bring their ideas and share information. Presented here, we have the 2015 Regional Expert Meeting on Sargassum Invasion in West Africa. Um, UWI had a Sargassum Symposium in 2018. There is the International Conference on Sargassum in 2019. Cesar shared some of the other events and there are so many more that have happened this year and even more to come. Other activities include the specially protected areas and wildlife for the wider Caribbean region. So the SPA Sargassum Working Group, and this falls under the Cartagena Convention. And there's also the Sargonet Listserv through Florida International University. And this is to help facilitate communication among stakeholders. There have also been guides created on sargassum management in some regions or some countries in the Caribbean. Here we see one for the Dutch Caribbean and on the right, we see one for Mexico following the Puerto Morelos protocol. So we saw that there was a lot of work being done by various groups and more monitoring efforts were being created, but they were all disconnected. So based on conversations we had with stakeholders, there is a clear need to integrate monitoring, provide guidance on best practices for sargassum events, facilitate networking among the different groups, and host information all in a centralized location. To meet this need, GeoBlue Planet, Io Caribe, Atlantos, and the Air Center developed the Sargassum Information Hub to share information about sargassum in the tropical Atlantic. The hub aims to support collaborations, facilitate access to information, and prevent the duplication of effort. GeoBlue Planet created the content for the website with support with Io Caribe and Atlantos and Air Center provided the resources for the website, which was designed by site. These four groups are the hub organizers, but this hub is for the community. Um, and so we welcome your feedback and your contributions to help it grow. And now I'll take you through the website. The first portion of the hub gives a very brief overview of what Sargassum is and its brief history in the region. The next tab on the hub provides information on what is within the hub itself. So the hub provides information of what sargassum is and why it's important. Monitoring forecasting of sargassum in the tropical Atlantic. Management of sargassum. Ongoing research. Upcoming and past events, as well as news. And so now I will exit the PowerPoint and I will take you through the website. Here we see the homepage of the Sargassum Information Hub. 
We've seen the two tabs so far. So next I'll go into monitoring. And when you scroll down, the first set of information you'll see is a way to download and submit data. So first is the pelagic sargassum report. And this is to collect in situ observations in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And this is run through NOAA Coast Watch. Next is the Sargassum Watch EpiCollect project. And this is run by a PhD candidate at um, Florida, excuse me, Florida International University. Further down, you have the bulletins and reports that I mentioned earlier. As well as the viewers and the forecasting systems. And you can click on any of these icons and it'll lead you to the viewer or the bulletin. Now I'll move on to the management page. So as I mentioned earlier, we are hoping to create a best management, best management practices guide. And if you are interested in contributing to that guide, please let us know. If you scroll down this page, you see our request for protocols and guides for managing sargassum. And so if you have one, we ask that you upload it to the Ocean Best Practices Repository. And so what they've done is create a sargassum management tab and so you could easily find any documents on sargassum management or protocols or guides. So for example, if I wanted to look up a clean up manual, I'll make sure that the tag says sargassum management and clean up manual, and the results are seen here. And so I'll click on this first one the prevention and cleanup of sargassum in the Dutch Caribbean. And so this link takes you directly to the Ocean Best Practices website. And what we see first is an abstract of this document. And as we scroll down, if we look on the left first, we see that there's a way to download this as a PDF. We see information on when it's created and by who. And then on the middle column, we can find the URL for this document who it's published by, what language it's in, and other inf important information, such as sustainable development goals it focuses on, essential ocean variable types, what type of best practice, is it a manual, a guide, or a cookbook, the area that it covers, and the benefit of submitting your guide or your protocol to the Ocean Best Practices repository is that it will have a citation and a DOI. So if anyone uses it, you have a citation that they could reference. So if you have a guide or a protocol that you'd like to share, whether it's for um, ocean or beach cleanup or how to analyze satellite data, please upload your practices here. The next tab is on research information, and it covers a few topics. First, we have distribution and movement, monitoring, forecasting, biology and ecology, collection and use of sargassum, management, and impacts. And within each of these categories, we see that there is a research summary, which is about three to five paragraphs on the current status of the science. And then a recommended reading list with hyperlinks so that you could go to the original source. Next is our directory of organizations and experts. So the first map you see here are organizations and groups involved in sargassum monitoring and management. And so when there are groups registered on this page, you'll be able to see dots on the map and then you could click on a dot, oh, here we go, um, and see what organization that is and get more information about how they are involved in sargassum work.
while looking at this map, you could also see a list of all the organizations and then export this list to a CSV file. And I will note that if you are interested in all the countries or all the organizations listed, I would zoom all the way out so you could download every data point. And if your organization is not listed on here, you could click register your organization and you could record your organization name, description, description of sargassum activities, your activity website, the organization location, the organization type, whether it's governmental, research, nonprofit, or other. Upload a logo and include relevant files. And I will note that we currently don't have organizations listed in Africa. And I did see that we have a number of participants from countries in the Abidjan Convention. So if your organization is not listed here, please submit. Within this map, we also have an, a registry for experts. So if you scroll down, there is a link to the ocean expert profile. And so we ask that if you are an expert in the sargassum field, that you register with oceanexpert.net and provide your ocean expert profile link here. And so this is the ocean expert page. This is a directory of marine and freshwater professionals. And you're able to browse by country and subject of research and institution name. So once you make your profile here, please go back to this survey and link it. Next, we have events. So we have a list of upcoming events, as well as an archive of past events, just to keep track of what conversations are happening throughout the Atlantic. And so if you have an upcoming event, or if you know of one that we missed, please let us know. Lastly on the page um, is news articles on sargassum. And if you scroll down from any tab on the bottom left corner, you see a link to join the SARG, SARG net listserv. So if you are not on it already and you wanna interact with the community, please um, join that listserv. And so again, this hub is for the community and there's space for it to grow. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to add um, any content, please contact us at info at sargassumhub.org and check out sargassumhub.org. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you, Leah. Great job on the overview of the hub. Um, so now for the rest of the meeting, we'll have a question and answer period. And so again, we'll encourage everyone to put their questions in the chat, but we'll start with a question for Cesar Toro, which is in your point of view, what are the regional capacity development needs and challenges for the region? Thank, thank you, uh, Emily, for, uh, and for uh, for Elva for the question. Uh, I, I think that the, the the major the major challenge that we have here is the coordination of efforts. If we look at the if we look at the networks <clears throat> that uh, I am uh, only focusing on the sargassum science and capacity uh, development. The, the, the first challenge that we are facing is that we have a major, a, a good number of groups, people and experts, institutions, 
uh, governments, uh, governmental uh, offices and institutions like the ministries and as well as uh, research institutions at the national level and or universities, academia, etc. They do have, <clears throat> a, we have a good number of people and I would say the critical mass is there in order to address the major issues from the, uh, from, uh, to, to uh, respond to the, to the, uh, a, the question of sargassum influxes and phenomenon. However, there is a clear need for a coordinating those efforts. Second element that is extremely important is that a, even though I mentioned we have a good, a, a, a good and a strong critical mass, that is not necessarily the, uh, uh, the, uh, evenly distributed in the region. So that's why creating those partnerships in order to balance that asymmetry in, in the capacities of, of the different countries, uh, it will be needed. And again, the, one, of, one of the possibilities and opportunities we have now is to discuss this within the, the, the discussions and, and uh, a development and implementation of the strategy of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Oh, great. Thank you, Cesar. So our next question is regarding the nutritional benefits of sargassum. And there were a couple questions about that as well as contributions to the blue economy. And one of our participants also noted that there is a need to do increased monitoring and measurements on the content of heavy metals and other potential contaminants in sargassum, which would be related to using it as a, a food source in compost or in animal food. So I'd like to see now if any of our participants would like to address this issue, our, our panelists. Any, any takers up on that, on the, on the use of, of sargassum and um, any concerns about the co nutritional content? Um, Hazel or Isabel? Sorry, yes, this is Hazel. Um, I was having problems with my microphone. Um, yes, there are concerns with using sargassum uh, in the food chain, in the human food chain because of the very high content of arsenic that appears to be common uh, in the samples that have been tested so far. So um, it is work that is ongoing. And we speak a little bit about this in the uses guide that we hope to be releasing um, within a few weeks. Okay, uh, can I, I can also say that, well, Arsenic in, in seaweed is not only in sargassum, but we need to find really out the levels and, and if it's really a threat uh, for human health or even for animals. Um, but there is a lot of interest. And of course, there are these guides. There is also be the, um, the uh, European Biomass Association, Algo Biomass Association is organizing a, a, um, a workshop just on the possible use for sargassum in November. So, I mean, trying to bring together all the knowledge that already exists on, on the, this source of biomass. Great, thank you, Isabel. Um, so we'll move on to the next question. Um, so we had a, a question from 
uh, one of our colleagues about the um, Atlantos um, guides, um, best practices guides. Uh, so that's a question for, for Sandra, if those are available and if you could share a link to that. So um, yeah, I'm, I mean, within Atlantos, we built the program on around the framework for ocean observations. So you can take a look at that. That was um, developed after the Ocean Ops Conference in 2009 and um, yeah, published in 2012. So that's something we built around. And I can for sure share the link, for example, to the um, high level strategy again. Um, but yeah, so all the best practices developed um, within Atlantos will be shared through the Ocean Best Practices system as well that um, is, for example, linked to the Sargassum Information Hub as the showcase. Oh, great. Thank you, Sandra. Um, and we had a question for uh, Akrima about how organizations indicate interest in joining the, the Sargadap Sarga network of stakeholders that are in component two of your project. Thank you for the question. Um, right now we are um, sort of just getting off the ground. Like I said, we just launched the project. We're sort of just getting up and running in terms of um, identifying stakeholders and sort of creating a framework for that. Um, so right now you can just drop us an email. Um, there's an email address, um, contact information for the team on the website that um, we link to in the presentation, um, but it, I'll drop a, an email address as well into the chat. Um, you can just drop us an email and we will add you to the sort of fledgling database that we have and then you will hear from us as we proceed. Oh, great, thank you. Another question that we have is about the impact of sargassum on fisheries. I know that the University of West Indies has done some analysis on impact of fishermen. Um, so if anyone from um, CERMES would like to answer that question or any of other, other panelists provide any information about the known impacts of sargassum on fisheries. I can speak briefly to that. Um, we've done a fair amount of work from early days on originally the negative impacts of sargassum on fisheries and the disruption that was caused by um, difficulty in accessing vessels, in navigating, uh, damage to engines that became overheated or got stuck in sargassum. And we've subsequently, uh, sorry, and we've published a, a few technical reports that are available on our website at CERMES. Um, we've also uh, looked at the catch data. And in fact, we're finding quite wide variation in the impacts on fisheries. So for some species, um, sargassum appears to be a benefit. And for other species, the catches are being disrupted because those species, for example, flying fish are much harder to catch when sargassum is around. And then species like dolphin fish, um, sargassum is bringing very young fish into the region and they're being caught in large numbers which appears to be affecting the availability of larger fish later on in the season. So the, um, in general, the impacts on fisheries are quite varied. Uh, great, thank you, Hazel. So it sounds like there's still a fair amount of research that needs to be done on that area. And we'll move on to our, our next question, which is from Greg Jenkins at uh, Penn State. Um, are increasing sea surface temperatures or transport of Saharan dust to the Atlantic being linked to this bloom? And we also had a previous question about um, when sargassum blooms and what is causing the increase. Are there any panelists who would like to answer that question?
Um, if not, I could pr provide some information. There was a, a recent study that was published that we have information about on the research page for the Sargassum Hub, um, where they were looking at changes in currents and how that that was providing impacts to the changes in distribution of Sargassum. I know that there is a lot of, of interest looking at um, other types of impacts, such as um, the new nutrient supplies from Saharan dust um, and other changes in the physical oceanography, such as uh, sea surface temperature. Um, and so there is some, some ongoing research related to that activity. Um, one thing that uh, I, I would point out is um, we have some recommended reading related to this topic that you can find under the research tab of the Sargassum Information Hub under distribution and, um, and movement. Um, but as we move forward, we're always interested in, in looking at um, adding in new information. And uh, one venue that has been very helpful for the, the sharing of that information of uh, new research topics is the uh, Sargnet listserv. So I would encourage everyone who is interested in keeping up to date on recent research to um, join that listserv um, as well as uh, have um, access to information on the um, impacts of uh, various uh, physical and biological changes that are, are driving the increases of sargassum. Um, so I'll move on to our, our next question um, from Elva Escobar, which is, can sargassum data from the ocean atmosphere and, um, oops, the question disappeared, um, be, be used for connecting with educational purposes in, in classrooms? So looking at um, educating local, local students that are in line of information about um, sargassum data and visualizations. Um, are there any, any panelists that would like to answer that question? I, I would say that yes, and uh, uh, of course, one of the major uh, uh, features of the uh, uh, of the Sargassum Hub is precisely to uh, to open access and uh, open data sharing. So uh, that will be one one of the possibilities here to use all that information that we are having accessing the hub to uh, be able to uh, use it in uh, for those educational purposes. May I? Um, I would add that, um, you know, I, I'm sure that the that information and materials could be produced um, resources for teachers and educators. Um, and maybe that scenario that we could explore under Sargad app um, if, if people are interested in terms of having um, some one of the knowledge products or tools and guidance materials being focused on something appropriate for um, for use in schools. So that's something that um, we'd be happy to discuss as we sort of work through engaging with stakeholders and, and what their communication needs are. Uh, great, thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll move on to our, our next question, which is from Jay Perlman, which is how is community consensus done in defining best practices and which communities are involved in the formulations? So I will um, answer this question first and then if any of our panelists would like to add, please go um, forward. Uh, so for the Ocean best practices, currently we as 
Leah had showed have a link to um, ocean best practices in terms of sargassum management. And so best practices for the, the management are um, something that is of general interest to the community. And so I'll, I'll ask some of our, our colleagues um, that have worked on compiling some of the management, how you all go about locally getting the best practices defined in your communities. Um, but I'll mention that there is an upcoming um, virtual workshop in September that is the Ocean Best Practices um, workshop. And we are going to have a session there on ocean best practices for sargassum. And so that is being organized by myself, uh, Cesar Toro and Shellyanne Cox uh, from the University of West Indies. And for that, we are going to have um, some of these discussions at that meeting in terms of how to review a lot of the best practices that have been produced related to management and identify how the communities could work together to develop consensus around certain items. And so that will include information about um, the management, which uh, as Cesar and um, Karima mentioned are very um, important issues for the user communities who are being impacted by this, but we can also discuss information such as uh, best practices for disseminating some of the information to stakeholders in, in various capacities, as well as the um, monitoring best practices. And so we will post information about that workshop on the Sargassum Information Hub, um, including registration, um, which is free of charge for that workshop um, after we move forward with planning that session. And as a, as a follow-up, would uh, some of our colleagues who worked on some of the management guides on our panel like to talk about how you all worked with your communities to identify some of the management suggestions? So um, Hazel or Karima or uh, Shelly Ann. Hi, good morning. Can everybody hear me well? Yes. Oh, yes, there's just a bit of um, background noise where I am. My apologies for that. Um, so we are speaking towards management um, under a project we're undertaking called Climate Change Adaptation in the Eastern Caribbean Fisheries. We're actually working on developing four sargasm management plans. Um, we're also referring to, the, to them as sargasm adaptive management strategies. Um, but we have been emphasizing the need for these plans or strategies to be very dynamic and possibly web-based because we know, I mean, we've been talking this morning that information that is coming out of for, about sargasm is very dynamic. We are learning new things every day. Um, so plans and strategies that are being developed can't be static. We are also building upon previous um, initiatives, um, guidance, for instance, I don't know how many of you would have known about the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Model Protocol for managing sargasm. So we've taken guidance from those as well as other existing um, management plans in the region, as well as all the guidance that has been published. Um, um, good news, Barbados, um, through the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy in, in association with Jeff Small Grants, has approved some funding for Barbados to be included. So we'll be, um, we will be using the guidance under the CCC for Fish project uh, and applying that to the Barbados case scenario. So we're hoping that by December, um, because we have to do consultations in country and go through a couple iterations of the draft plans that we can hopefully um, share this and perhaps um, upload it to the hub after we go through all of the um, publication processes and so on, um, so that this could help feed into the initiative that's been spoken here about, about developing this best practice for uh, managing sargasm. 
Um, so everyone can feel free. I can provide my information if you want to find out more. Um, but yeah, there is some exciting things happening on the ground. And of course, we are being met with some challenges, availability of information and so on, but we're working to address these. Thank you. Oh, great, thank you. Uh, the next question is on if experts can register and contribute um, information related to carbon budgets, so flux and storages, looking at carbon export to um, the deep and how that, that is explored in Sargassum, um, that I would say uh, certainly people who are experts in that type are um, encouraged to register for um, the Sargassum Expert Registry. And if there are, um, again, um, questions or studies about that, um, that come about the, the SARGnet listserv is a, is a good place to have a um, discussion related to that activity. And Emily, oh. um, I, I would like to add, um, so since we have like this few use cases within Atlantos and we uh, really like to combine, for example, the, the different ones, um, you yeah, feel free to get in contact with us as well to then we, we might can include this and in, in the use case approach. Uh, great, thank you. Um, and there are um, there an additional question about harvesting biomass and using the alginates and mannitol from the sargassum. So I'll say that there are a fair amount of um, funded projects who are looking at using sargassum, and um, there are people who are are designing at sea harvesting boats and, and things of that sort. Um, again, as was mentioned previously, I think that there is some analysis that needs to be done on the, the contents in terms of if, if the biomass has um, information or issues related to uh, contamination from, from arsenic or, or other areas. Um, but uh, I'll see if, if uh, Isabel or any of our other um, seaweed scientists would like to talk about the harvesting of some of the biomass. Okay, uh, well, as you said, there are projects looking at this. For alginate, you need quite a big amount, which it looks like it's possible here. But also uh, for this industry, sometimes you need a steady supply of biomass. So I don't know in, in detail what is the problem here. And also not all brown seaweeds are the best for alginate and so um, you need to see I mean this is this may be just an economic problem and that you need the this, the collection and uh, and um, and uh, extraction and all this be worthwhile and one of the problems of this biomass as far as I've seen is that you cannot, I mean, this biomass is very, it's very, uh, changes a lot with time and you never know how much you are uh, getting. And this may be a problem for alginate um, extraction. But of course, I think a lot more is going to be uh, known uh, soon because there are several projects that are looking at this possibility at the moment. And Alginate is really some uh, product that has a lot of uh, a lot of uses and um, a lot of uh, a good market. Uh, not very very high price, but a very good market and established market. Oh, great. Thank you, Isabel. May I, Emily? Yes. I just wanted to, to add, um, I, I touched on in the presentation that for the for the SIDS, for our small island states, our, our small island realities sort of shape 
um, how sargassum affects us and also our, our options and opportunities for addressing it. And so while we are keen to sort of um, turn the tables on sargassum and, and treat it as an opportunity, there are some unique challenges when it comes to harvesting in small islands versus sort of larger continental land masses, um, smaller spaces and, you know, fragmented um, beaching of the sargassum because of smaller beaches, pocket beaches on a lot of the east coast of the islands. And so the logistics of harvesting and collection um, and creating that steady supply that in, Isabel mentioned in terms of certain uses becomes a significant challenge. And so it's some of the things that um, are being discussed sort of don't necessarily translate across the board in terms of the different countries that are, are facing this challenge. And I think that, that those logistical issues are an area that needs some, some further consideration. Uh Great, thank you very much for those informative answers. And so to wrap up the session, I would like to ask the panelists to provide their insights on what they think are the biggest challenges in terms of moving forward with monitoring and management of sargassum and how you think a basin-wide network could help support uh, capacity development related um, to monitoring and management of sargassum in the region. Uh, is for us uh, that question, Emily? Yes. Yes. Well, I, I, I will start. I, I, I am apologize for taking the, uh, the floor right now, but I, I would say that uh, let me start by, by stressing the importance uh, of the large number of, group, of groups, experts and institutions who are dealing and studying, researching on the issue of sargassum phenomena. However, as we saw, a, the major challenge here is the coordination of those efforts. If we are really willing to move forward, that has been a, a lot of work done in the last uh, six years, I would say. And also the, uh, the establishment of a series of networks that uh, help really to move forward into that a more consolidated or more strong uh, collab co collaboration and cooperation among the groups. That is uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the challenges and advantages that we have now. now. I would also say that uh, there is, uh, an, under the present circumstances, we have a major challenge: is uh, all our fleet and uh, uh, of, uh, research vessels and most of the observing uh, networks. They are. Uh, uh, the, uh, most, of, most of the vessels, they are already at, at, at harbor. So we have a, a major challenge because of the COVID-19 on keeping all the obs uh, 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 observing networks running. Th so that, that has a large impact and we need to find out exactly how we are going to, to move forward from this situation and uh, a, a Running again with the uh, with a full op uh, at the full operational scale of the observation observing systems. On the other hand, we have also the possibility that we were forced of having these interaction, uh, having workshops, etc., at the uh, uh, virtually. That is is strengthening the is strengthening the possibilities of of uh, working together uh, with the different. Uh, experts and institutions who are around the, wor the world. So that will be a, will be a, a, a possibility here. Uh, great, thank you, Cesar. Would uh, Isabel or Sandra or Leia like to talk about that from the Atlantos or GEO perspective? Um, I can start from from the Atlantis perspective and um, probably or perhaps as I would like to to add something. But yeah, as as we identified and as Caesar said, so it's 
I, I think the biggest challenge is to uh, yeah get the communities together and um, or what's what's really important to to get the communities together as well for example the observing community together with the modeling community to identify why the the sargassum bloom for example is happening and why it gets stronger and stronger within the last years and um yeah, so, so therefore, I think with the Sargassum Hub, we did a great first step to, uh, to allow experts and organizations to register. And yeah, looking forward to, to move forward and um, yeah, contacting stakeholders, experts in this field. Well, I just would like to add something a bit uh, different, maybe. Um, yeah, we still don't know why this is happening. And so to manage this, I think it's important to, to understand better what is happening and why it's happening. But um, I think one interesting question we should discuss between the different uh, communities is if we, if we can, should we end this phenomenon? I mean, this is very uh, important because um, if we find a way really to decrease this, this uh, mass uh, proliferation of sargassum, should we try to do it? And I hear more and more um, people really seeing this as a, as a, as a resource and not uh, as a problem. I mean, for the moment, it's definitely a problem, but looking at this as a resource. And if we really think that this is a resource, then we should not really try to, to stop it. And I think this is an, a discussion. And now I think this is a very different, but I've been uh, in a lot of discussions on biodiversity and ecosystems. So I think this is also an important discussion to have um, what's, so is this really something that is bad and that we want to learn more about so we can fight it? Or should we just focus on using this the best we can for, 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 for economy and to, to really take advantage of this, uh, uh, this phenomenon? I think this really is, uh, this will bring many more people to the table if we want to discuss this. Thank you, Isabel. And with that, we've reached the top of the hour. So I'd first like to thank all of our presenters and panelists. Um, very helpful discussion. And again, we would welcome feedback from everyone. Um, from the Sargassum Information Hub. So please feel free to review the website and provide any feedback that you have to us at um, info at sargassumhub.org. And um, the link to the video will be on the Air Center uh, YouTube channel, as well as linked to the presentations on the website. So thank you all for joining and we look forward to collaborating with you all in the future. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you indeed and bye-bye.